This program is brought to you by Optus. Hi and welcome to This Is Your Life. Well, tonight's guest of honour has recorded and promoted some of the biggest names in music around the world. And he's now organising what for him is a lifelong dream, to stage a concert here at a packed out Melbourne cricket ground. And before he did all this, he was just the skinny son of a Russian migrant. Now at the moment, we know he's arriving on the other side of the ground for what he thinks is a story to be done on this concert. But we've set the whole thing up. We're going to hide and then return for our sting. We're rolling. So Michael, how are you going to be feeling in uh, 48 hours time? Well, hopefully the weather will be a lot better and uh, we'll be uh, celebrating the uh, concert of my lifetime. How long has this taken you to put together? Well, I guess we had the idea of doing a big concert for the start of the 25th anniversary, but we really couldn't get the sponsorship, so got uh, the money to do it. Michael Gadinsky. I told you I was too young for this. How, how could you do this to me? This is my first life. Welcome to the MPG. Thank looking you for having me. Uh, no, I'm not looking for Jimmy Barnes, I'm looking for you. Yeah, well, and you thought this was an interview for the Today Show. Yeah, I did, you sneak. <laughs> Boy, are you a joke. Well, I started against this. Don't look around the stage, he says. Right. That's my stage. I'll look at it if I like. <laughs> well done. No worries, mate. You're going to have a great night. I hope so. Thank yeah. you. This is my life. <laughs> And it's best. It's playtime. Do I have four legs? It's party time. Give it to me. You're so naughty. Live with Ricky Martin, the Super Jesus, and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Daryl, come back. For McDonald's 6 that is Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Gadinsky. Michael Solomon Gadinsky. <laughs> Good Irish name. You're born in Melbourne on the 22nd of August 1952. You're the youngest of three children to Nina and Cuba, Russian migrants after the Second World War. You grow up in a very strict home in Caulfield. You're first regarded as a bit of a mummy's boy. And then as a seven-year-old, show quite a bit of entrepreneurial skill when it comes to being a car park attendant. Is that true, Michael? Two bob a car, eight cars in the backyard. <laughs> no uniform, though. And your dad knew? Well, I didn't cut him in, no. <laughs> uh, now, by the time you're a teenager, your two great loves are Aussie rules football and music. He entered the music business just because of the girls. It's two of your oldest school friends, Michael Olensky and Sam Roden. <laughs> and Michael, it all started, did it because of girls? Yes, uh, Michael's real interest was always girls. He only admitted it recently. Like doctor, you can't give out confidential information. He only admitted it recently, but it was girls that got him involved in music. So did you know he, he would go as far? I mean, did you see that, that, that drive in him already at yep. that age? Yep. Yep. He just had a look in his eye and he just, he meant Forget it. the girls, I just didn't want to pay money to get into the dance. I thought That's we'd right. better run him, eh, Sam? That's right. <laughs> which, which you ran with Michael, right? Yeah, the dancers? Right. That's right. That's uh, we started off with the dancers and uh, remember we used to go down to St Kilda Beach and hand out the pamphlets. 10 cents discount if you come tonight and uh, first <laughs> night we had 600 kids turn up to our dance and mostly girls mostly girls yeah we did all right with the girls i was counting the money he was yeah. counting the girls <laughs> was there lots of money <laughs> we had a good partnership fellas thank you very much for joining us appreciate it Now, your flair for running these dances is obvious, and you're then offered a job with a band promoter. So at just 17, three months before your final high school exams, you actually accept the job. True? Absolutely. Unbelievable. Best thing I ever did. 
He talked me into it three times over. The only trouble is, of course, your parents don't know because they're overseas at the time. Your father returns and promptly throws you out of the house. Obviously very displeased. But he did the right thing. Did he? Yeah. And, and, from what, <laughs> and from what I hear, your mother did the right thing too, huh? Feeding you. Well, we, she wouldn't come to the apartment, which a friend of mine now actually owns, but we'd meet on the corner and she'd bring me chicken soup, yes. <laughs> By 18, you're managing nationally known bands with your own promotions company. In 1972, you stage managed the historic Sunbury Rock Festival. That same year, you form your own record company. You call it Mushroom Records. And Michael, you are now the ripe old age of 19. We're on the prowl in the 70s. From Skyhook's Red Simons and Old 55's Frank Holden. The Red Skyhooks, yeah. Skyhook, Later. Skyhooks, and uh, and Gadinsky uh, had quite a relationship and a partnership. Didn't well, I first came across Michael in the early 70s. He was talent spotting around uh, Melbourne pubs, and I suppose he must have gone home because he spotted the Skyhooks and uh, and signed us. And I, I've got great memories of those times. I mean. That time in far north Queensland where those girls, they said they'd been at a fancy dress party and that's why they were wearing school uniforms. We've got a deal. <laughs> remember, those girls, remember those girls at the, the man's room? They had really big hands and feet. I wouldn't really keep on with this red if I was you. <laughs> <laughs> but fr Talk Frank, Frank Ma Michael did have a unique <laughs> way of signing people up, didn't he? Well, what he'd do is uh, he'd invite you to a big party at his house, right? And he'd say, come along and meet the Mushroom family. So you'd go along there. In my case, I was a fresh-faced young accountant, hadn't seen much of life. So I went along to the house, and there are all of my rock gods, the heroes of my youth, all there in various states of intoxication and various states of undress. And he'd say, do you want to be part of this? And you'd take one look and you'd go, well, yeah. <laughs> Fellas, thanks very much for joining us. And he saved me from accounting. Thank you, thank you. We're a little bit richer. Over the years, This Is Your Life has given us many memorable moments. Right, Courtney, This Is Your Life. This Is Your Life, True Stories of Great Australians has your chance to savour those moments forever. This beautifully presented book highlights the lives of many famous and courageous Australians. Share their remarkable stories. Phone 1300 656 502 for your copy of This Is Your Life, True Stories of Great Australians. Yeah, Off the wall. It has, but you know, he's actually, he is a great dad and he's a great husband and he always actually puts us first anyway, no matter how busy he is, so, you know, and I love him. Please been take great, a seat. Michael. That's great. Please take a seat. In 1980, you're 27 when you sign up Split Ends. Their album, True Colours, is your first international hit. Now, at home throughout the 80s, you have phenomenal success with Jojo Zepp and the Falcons, Jimmy Barnes, Hunters and Collectors, The Models, Kids in the Kitchen, The Chantuzies, Indecent Obsession and Ian Moss, to name just a few of them. Hi Michael, here I am in your fabulous boardroom and I remember coming in here 11 years ago um, when Locomotion had just been released, which I know wasn't exactly your cup of tea and was very different from Mushroom in those days. So thank you for your faith and belief in me. And uh, what? 13 or 14 million albums and about 14 million singles later, I think we did pretty well together. So congratulations. I'm sure everyone's going to miss you dearly. Um, and I hope that we can keep in touch. Thank you very much. Lots of love. Now, by 1990, you're certainly a force in Australian music. You launch, guide, or promote some of our biggest names. And two of your stable of stars, who are also very close family friends, 
Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Diesel and Jimmy Barnes. You too, you too. So tell us about him. What can I tell you? He's a ridiculous, compulsive, obsessive, and they're just these good points. <laughs> and, uh, and he's exactly the same as me. Michael, I, you know, I, I, when I left uh, Coaches uh, in 83, you know, I'd watched Michael's label, and it was, there was, I'd been with this multinational label, and, and I'd seen Michael with these bands who he took and sort of nurtured, and, and it was the only person in the country that was making, that, getting bands and trying to make bands grow as opposed to sort of milking them and taking what they could so you know when i went to you know as soon as i left coaches I, that was immediately you know i wanted to go with michael and ever since then you know he's you know driven me nuts we had a great time together <laughs> but, and apart from your professional relationship i mean, I mean the families are yeah. very close aren't oh, they? we're very close uh, you know our, our children have grown up together you know susie's dear friend of myself and jane's and you know and, and mark and jeppy as well uh, you know, we're just big family. Michael, I've been through, you know, so all sorts of great times and hard times and all sorts, and Michael's been by my side every one of them, especially when it was harder, you know, so he's a great man. Good friend. <laughs> Diesel, how would you describe it? <laughs> oh, well, um, Michael has a very interesting phone te technique, which I'm sure a few people uh, can relate to. <laughs> uh, or lack of technique, I should say. It's always like a race to see who can hang up first, but... I, I... <laughs> I thought I had him once. I rang him really early and woke him up in his hotel. I think he was in London. I, he was, seemed to be on the phone for a very long time and I realised he'd actually fallen back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael, are you there? Well, at least he didn't hang up on you that time. <laughs> I got him that time. Yeah. Guys, thanks very much for Don't joining us. Much appreciated. <laughs> Now, Michael, you also have a passion for sport, and one of your great personal achievements is your hole in one. <laughs> and on the golf course that day, ladies and witness. gentlemen, there were even witnesses. That's right, Glenn Wheatley and John Farnham. I still don't think I can believe it, but it was a pretty amazing shot. Well, let me tell you the real truth. You totally overclubbed it. You used a five iron instead of a seven. If you'd have used the seven, you would have got in there correctly. The five iron, you had to land in the fall, in the hole, and you did. If you had have missed it, you would have bounced over the clubhouse. You'd have never been there. It was a fluke. That's true, because when, when Godinski gets his one wood out, duck for cover. Because like, he sprays them all over the place. And they're not cheap up there. I mean, I reckon I, I was up there with him one time, and I reckon he had about $100 of the balls in the bush <laughs> and it's serious bush well, up there. you can afford those hundred dollars balls now, yeah, but, sure. uh, now so that's okay but uh, michael we're pleased to be there for one of your lifetime ambitions uh, uh, you did say it was one of two i'll let you tell what the other lifetime ambition was but uh, we were pleased to be part of it on that particular day have a great night have a good night mate i'm not touching that other thing <laughs> what is it michael well there's a couple We've got to win that Melbourne Cup, Frankie. Don't you worry. We're going to do it wherever you are, if you're here. And uh, a number one record in America. We've had a number two with Kylie, but we've never had the big number one in America. But uh, we'll get there. Okay. This is my first life. Now, apart from your golf, your other great pastime is horse racing, which you alluded to. You once co-owned Thoroughbred Frontier Boy, who sends this cheerio. <laughs> sounded like one of your clients. <laughs> At least the horses can't talk back. <laughs> now here tonight are your racing buddies, trainer Lee Friedman, uh. Frank Stavala and your best mate Lee Simon. <laughs> Can I put them on? <laughs> Lee Freeman, if we can start with you, just how successful was Frontier Boy? Well, he was the first source that we had for Michael and the guys, and uh, yeah, Tell the truth. Th you he threw was... it out. <laughs> yeah, I did throw it out in the finish. Actually, I got thrown out, I think, but not by Michael. <laughs> Ran in the Melbourne Cup. Ran in the Melbourne Cup, won a St. Ledger. was quite a successful horse. Hey, I didn't yeah. run in the Melbourne Cup. Can we get it right? It led round the turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that much. And Lee, of course, you were being 
Michael's best mate, you see a very different side of him, don't you? Uh, yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen the highs, I've seen the lows, like most people. Uh, maybe Michael's a little bit more dramatic than most. Uh, but he's got a favourite saying, and that is, you can stab me in the front, but never stab me in the back. And I, I think that sums up Michael's philosophy in life, both in business and also on the personal side. Uh, respects loyalty and repays it generously. Yeah, well said. OK. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming in. <laughs> And coming up after the break, a few more surprises for Michael Gudinski, but first, some international mates. Michael, this is your life. How you doing, pal? <laughs> well, they asked me if I would, um, if I had some anecdotes or some stories about the times that we spent in our lives, and uh, so I was thinking about the 1987. Uh, oh, I can't, I, I can't say that one on TV. Uh, oh, remember the time, 1990? No, I can't say that one either. <laughs> I hope you remember the time you invited uh, the band and myself and the road crew over to your wonderful house, the country house. And uh, you had this great couch that I just happened to lay down on. I was just going to stay there for a few seconds. And everybody had a great day, and uh, they told me it was a great day. And I, I didn't know because I slept through the whole thing uh, because I'd been with you the night before. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Congratulations on This Is Your Life. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but right now I'm on tour in the UK. Now, the last time we did uh, the tour of Australia, it was fantastic, thanks to you. So hopefully the next time we do it, it'll be just as good. So my love to your wife, Sue, and again, all the best. How about 1995? 1995, yes, that was the time. No, well, no, can't say any of those on TV, but um, what I can say is that uh, every time I've been down in Australia, uh, you've always made me feel welcome. Uh, I can honestly say you're one of my best friends down under, and uh, thanks for being a great friend and uh, making me a big star down there. This is your life. Cheers, buddy. and promoter Michael Gudinski. Michael, this year you sell your stake in Mushroom Records to Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation for millions of dollars. And for the first time in years, this allows you to slow down and spend more time with the family, particularly with your son Matt and daughter Kate. Here they are. How are we going? And Matt, tell us what makes you so proud of this bloke. Well, it's just, um, I'm really proud of what he's achieved in the last 25 years, and now he's sold his stake in Mushroom Records, we can spend more time together. But I especially like the way he dresses up when we go out. What? what? <laughs> hey, you share a passion with Dad too, don't you? Yeah. What is that? Um, I like singing. And you want to go into the music industry too, huh? Yeah. Is Dad going to help you? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> what sort of a dad is he? Um, a cuddly one. Cuddly one. <laughs> Beautiful. Thanks, Mark. Yes. Now, tonight wouldn't be the same, Michael, if we didn't have Guess Who. I'm no saint, but I am. <laughs> it's Molly Meldrum and, of course, St Kilda great Peter Spider Everett. <laughs> We can do it. Uh, Mole, if we can start with you, just give us your worst Gudinski story. I can't because basically Michael and I have had more dramas than Shakespeare <laughs> and probably more laughs than Seinfeld. I mean, I could go through a lot of stories, him shoving my head in the microwave oven and my hat going I couldn't off. I close but... it. <laughs> but no, no, I'm going to be very nice tonight. I just want to say, uh, because we really are like, you know, like Waddle Matthew and, uh, and Jack Lemmon in Grumpy Old Men. I mean, it's just silly. I'll make up tonight. I love him as a friend. I totally admire him for what he's done in this business, despite what Senator Alston may think. He's done an incredible amount for the Australian rock industry. And he is a wonderful uh, dad and husband to Sue and to the kids. Uh, and I'll just simply say, I love you, mate. Good on you. Now I can hate you for the next 10 years. <laughs> 
<laughs> you actually have aspirations to be a bit of a rock star yeah, yourself, right? Yeah, I did right? actually. I wanted to speak to Mike about that because uh, I've got my own song and uh, really? Spider Dance. <laughs> have you ever done that? Come on, Come on. Spider Dance. <laughs> but, I was there in '66. I want to be there. I want to be there again with you, man. No, so we brought you a present, the headband. Yeah, you can wear this, and this is for '99. The Spider <laughs> headband. <laughs> Uh, and Michael, tonight <coughs> would not be the same without our next surprise. She's there for you when you turn from boy to man. She's with your mum and dad, helping bring you up. Now, you might not have seen her for half your life, but she has fo been following every inch of your career for the past 25 years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michael's former nanny, Carmen Colombo. <laughs> So you haven't seen him since he was what, 15? Oh, I'm bothered. <laughs> yeah. And what so do you... I did ring. I told him ring back. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, it sounds like one of your return calls. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, what? What do you remember most about him? He was lovely. Just beautiful. <laughs> You told the and, truth. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> and Carmen, you mentioned actually today that uh, that Mr. Gadinsky told you something just before he passed away. He was so proud, Michael. So is your mum. You know that. <laughs> what did he, he tell you? Last time I saw him, the last thing he said to me, Carmen, mark my words. You remember your father? I always said that. Mark my words, Carmen. Michael be so big in music business. He be so big. So don't be regretful because they don't see you. They knew it. Good. They knew it. Well, <laughs> Maybe you'd be so big. He'd be looking at you from there. And very and proud. Say, very proud. Very proud of you. Yeah. The both of them. Good to see you. <laughs> Carmen, thank you, you for like joining us. You. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Michael, for over 25 years, you help launch some of the biggest names we have in music in this country. And your take no prisoners attitude still manages to earn you the respect and loyalty in an industry which, let's face it, is pretty cutthroat. And of course, tonight wouldn't be the same if we didn't finish the show with a tribute song. And it's quite a trio. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Jack Jones, Diesel and Jimmy Barnes. <laughs> Guests choose to stay at the Grand Hyatt. Jimmy, 
Michael Gadinski, this is your life. Seen the show. And out of the book. Yes, Australia's favourite surprise party is now a book. Relive the magic moments and read the true stories of over 80 great Australians. Only $29.95 plus postage and handling by calling this number now.